Hey everybody, welcome back. I wanted to make this video to kind of help out anybody who's not really familiar with how the 3D Send PC emulator works. It does work a little bit different from other emulators that you may be used to. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to add games, add screenshots to your profiles, and what the various settings do. Just remember that no ROM files are included with 3D Send. You will have to find those on your own. To get started, you have to join the Discord server and I will have a link to that in my description below. So let's get started. Once you've joined the 3D Send Discord, make sure you read this note by Geode before you start anything else. Then you're going to navigate to the 3D Send beta channel and you'll see what looks like a pushpin at the top. By clicking this pushpin, these are the pinned messages. This is where you can download the newest beta. It's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac, so make sure you download the correct one for your operating system. After the download is complete, you will have this zip file. You'll need a program like WinRAR or 7-Zip to extract this file. Just right click the file, go down to 7-Zip, and extract here. You'll now have a 3D Send demo folder. Inside that folder are all the program files. Just double click on 3D Send Demo.exe and prepare yourself for the awesome. When the program first loads up, you'll be brought to the settings screen. And we're going to go over all these settings in detail a little bit later. But first, I'm going to show you how to add the games to your menu. So we want to click on the game option here. And this is what your menu is going to look like. You're going to have all these gray boxes with game names above them. It's best to think of these boxes not as games, but as profiles. You can't play just any game with 3D Send, only what is available to you on the screen here. So this is the Adventure Island profile. This will only work correctly with Adventure Island. Same with any of the other games, Castlevania, Chippendale. These profiles only work with those specific games. If you attempt to load a game up that profile doesn't belong to, then you're going to have a mess. If you're using a controller, you'll notice that you can't navigate through the menus very well using the control pad. The menu is actually meant to be navigated with a mouse. How to add your games? You're going to click on one of the profiles and then right click. You'll be brought up to a folder navigation menu. This is where you're going to navigate to the folder where you keep your NES ROMs. Now from here, you can scroll through your games list if you wish to find the ROM associated with that profile or you can use the handy search option at the top. We're on Adventure Island, so that's what I'm gonna type in here. And I'm given the three Adventure Island games that I have. First game is actually called Hudson's Adventure Island, so I'm gonna click on that, then click Open. And the game starts up. From here, you're gonna to wanna to hit the Escape button or the Menu button on your controller. And when you do that, you see that a screenshot has been taken from where you last left off in the game. And right-click that screenshot to set it as the profile image. Let's add Arkanoid next. So I'm gonna double-click the profile, and it's going to bring up the folder where I have my ROMs. You don't have to keep navigating to your ROMs folder, it will save. We found Arkanoid, I'm going to click it and then click open, hit escape, right click the screenshot, and it's added to the profile. And you can do that for the rest of the profiles. Now every time you double click a profile, the game will start automatically. You have two sort options up here at the top, alphabetical or recently played. You can navigate through the different pages of games by clicking the numbers at the bottom, or you can use the D-pad on your controller. You can click and drag the profile list to get access to the other profiles. Say you're playing your game and you want to save your progress. Just go back to the menu, go to the save option. And from here, you can double click the slot that you want to save your game to. Same thing with loading your progress. You go to the load option and double click your save slot. And then you resume where you left off. A few additions were made to version nine to include a 2D mode a first person view when playing Flappy Bird, and navigating through your games quickly when using the scroll wheel. 2D mode allows you to open any ROM that you have and play it without the 3D effects. You can still maneuver the game screen. You cannot customize a screenshot for the 2D mode profile. Wherever you left off in your last game, that will be your screenshot. Now let's take a look at the settings menu. You have a slider here for light that affects how bright your games are. So with the light completely turned off on Castlevania, this is what it looks like. Now if we go back to the menu and put it all the way up, you can see that it changes how the light affects the game. Same thing with the volume slider. Turned up all the way, you can hear the sound effects and the game music. Turn it all the way down and you've muted your game. The background music option will play background music while you're in the menu. The shadow option will turn shadows on and off. So if we look into the game, when I jump, you can see a shadow behind Simon. If we uncheck that, then go back into our game, there is no shadow there. You have different options for the skybox, which is the area surrounding the menu, and it does affect how the game looks as well. If you leave it at default, you'll have the default background. Change it to all black, and when you go back to your game, the game will have a black background. The same with gradient, 
and Fantasy. The speed slider affects the speed of the game. Setting it all the way to the left will slow down your game significantly, and all the way to the right will speed it up. You can adjust the frame rate between 90 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and 120 frames per second. You can also enable and disable frame skip. You have two options for rendering, direct, or render text. These options, along with the anti-aliasing and text scale options, affect the actual graphics of the game. Here's a short explanation from Geode himself how render and frame skip work. The full screen option can be toggled on or off, and it allows you to make the 3D sin window full screen or not. The next options are input bindings. You can select player one or player two bindings, whether you're using a keyboard or a gamepad. When gamepad is selected, you can choose between X input or any other gamepads that you have connected to your PC. And when I have my 8-bit Do controller connected, that is an option and then I can rebind those keys. The option here allows you to enable or disable hitting start and select to get to the menu here. Maybe you have a controller that's stylized like an NES with only the BA start and select buttons on it. That's where that option becomes useful. And all the options below here just allow you to assign button inputs to your controller or keyboard if you wish. At the very bottom you have the how to section. So once you've left clicked a slot first and you've highlighted it blue, then you right click and then you can add your game. I showed you how to create the game art. What the switch views means is if you hit the menu button while in game, it'll switch back to the menu. To reset the camera while in game, you hold down the menu button. So if you're messing around with the graphics and you don't know how to get back to normal, hold down the menu button, release, and you're back to the original screen. To quick save, hold select and push down. And you'll see a little notification at the bottom of the screen. And then to quick load, hold select and push up, and once again, you'll see the notification at the bottom. And then the last option is the trigger zapper, which you do by right clicking your mouse and it simulates shooting with the Nintendo zapper. Just put the mouse cursor over your target and then right click. Now the beta is limited to the 30 profiles that you have here. The retail version is going to more than double that. And Geode actually has a VR version of this that's been out for almost a year now on Steam that you can purchase. If you have a VR setup, I highly recommend getting that version. And then to quit the program, you go to the quit option and then you would click the X. The overall layout and how you navigate through the menu probably won't change between the beta and the retail version. So these instructions should work for the retail version as well, which releases June 19th. So make sure you add that to your wish list so you don't forget to purchase it. Remember, if you're still having trouble or if you want to give feedback on the beta version, make sure and go to the Discord channel and go to the beta channel. And that's all I have for you. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank those users who support the channel through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Jordy Alex. Rick67, Travis Morton, Mike Muniz, Sam Torres, Yaroslav Orudzov, Andre G, Den Cardoso, Dor, Jason Hallbrooks, Craig Livesley, Magnesium Winterjuice, John Westby, and Batman.